Okay, so you can see this parabola does not pass the horizontal line test. So this is not a 1 to 1 function. A 1 to 1 function must pass the horizontal line test. Another way of saying that is no inverse. Every, every parabola that we get does not have an inverse unless we modify the original parabola. How about this one? Is this a one-to-one -one function? Yeah, it never touches the, the black curve more than once. So this is a one-to-one -one function. And it does have an inverse. So I'll say yes, inverse. A one-to-one -one function means for every x, there's one y. That's it. There's no other x that shares that same y value. And there's a fancy way of writing one-to-one. -one. So in math classes, we write one to one, I think. <laughs> I already forgot. Wow. What an idiot. There's a fancy way. There's another way, but it doesn't matter. OK. Um, so if you looked at the notes yesterday, let's do a problem, f of x. Find the inverse. So if you did not have a chance to look at the video, here's step one. Let f of x be replaced with the letter y. Step two. Replace or switch every x with a y and every y with an x. So I'll put a double arrow. So this guy has to become an x and this guy becomes a y. Step three. Solve for the new y. So how, the, currently the y is trapped in a radical, so what should I do first? Should I square both sides first or do something else? Subtract the 3. Square both sides. That's a perfect answer. If you wanted to, you could foil it out, but that, that doesn't really help the, the answer, the cause. Step 4. Replace y with the inverse notation. So f inverse of x equals x minus 3 squared. And that's the inverse. Or is it? I can, I can prove to you why it's not. I'm going to go to another screen here. This is our parent graph moved up three. Last year, you guys studied parent graphs in honors algebra two trig. It looks like this. And here's the inverse that we just found. x minus 3 squared. They're not inverses. And you can tell because every inverse has to have symmetry about this line. So now that I have the picture, one, two, three, this has to be the inverse. Escape. OK. Blue. So this is the answer right here, the blue one. How do I, how do I tell the reader it's just the blue one?
perfect. You're going to add a domain restriction. X is greater than or equal to 3. And what that does, it just has that part of the graph. And now that's the final answer. Okay. Let's do one without a domain restriction. Do you guys want to see a hard one? You guys ready to see a hard one? Okay. So, some people look bored because they actually did last night's homework. So let's do a hard one. Okay, follow these steps, they're right here. Step one, replace x and y, or replace f of x with a y, switch every x and y, solve for the new y, and so forth. Go ahead and do the steps for this one. So I switched x and y. That was this step. I went through the long process of solving for the new y, and I replaced the y with the inverse notation. Hey, how you doing? Alana, do you have a question? No. Yes. 3x plus 2. So... Um, where did you get the plus two? Well, uh huh. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, tell me your final answer. Something still doesn't seem right. We could switch all the signs, but I feel like something else didn't happen. So let me follow your work, okay? So right here, I think we took a different turn, right? Okay, so you added the 2 over, and you subtracted the... And then what was your next step? So you factor out the y and got what? 1 minus x. Okay. So it looks right. 3x plus 2. And then you divided that over. x plus 2 equals 1 minus x equals the inverse. No, that's right. It's just uh, we can factor out a negative 1. So if I wanted to, I could factor out a negative 1 from this one and a negative 1 from this one. It'll be the same answer. Okay. So on, on, for your response, you can, you can go either way. Cool? Okay, so that's one of the harder inverses. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question that we did at the very beginning of school on the review, okay? So, f of x equals um, 2x plus e to the x. I want you to find this guy without finding the inverse. I used to call this the rock star way. This, this one little thing is going to be super important this whole chapter. So it's okay if you don't get it again. We'll, we'll review it. We'll do it, practice until you get it, okay? And by the way, if you try to find the inverse, if you switch x and y, you'll hit a brick wall. You won't be able to solve it anyway, okay?
So I can see you guys look confused. We're going to set it equal to some unknown, okay? We don't know it. Would you agree? But when you learned this last year, inverses, if I drop the notation, so I'm going to drop that minus 1, it has to switch x and y. So now the unknown travels in here. Sorry. Come on. Okay. The unknown travels in here, and the one gets kicked out. So in your notes, make sure and write that down. Drop inverse. So I can't have a little minus one anymore. Now, why is this much better? Rick, would you agree we know f of x? It's right here, right? And it's saying f of x equals one, so I'm going to put one equals two x plus e to the x. On a scale of 1 to 10, how important is this? This is a 10, okay? So again, we're going to do this every day until you guys get it. Okay, take an educated guess. Most, most of the time, your best guesses are negative 1, 0, and 1. So do that in your head mentally or on paper. What would be a good guess, or what do you think would be the answer for this one? Uh, you only set it equal to 1 because it was in this number, you know, right there. If there's a 2 there, you set it equal to 2 and so forth. Great question. Got it? Zero. 0. And I'll prove it to you. So she's guessing 0. Two times 0 drops off. E to the 0 is 1. 1 equals 1 is true. So if I go back to my main setup here, this unknown was 0, which means... This unknown was zero, and now we have the answer. Yes? If, if you have to literally just guess, I would start with those guesses, okay? Sometimes, like I'm thinking of the AP test, they tell you the answer in a really weird way where you don't even know that's the answer, you know what I'm saying? So the people that write this are geniuses. So they're like, they give you this, this it's not a paragraph, it's a sentence, right? Like, oh, find the derivative at this, and by the way, they give you this weird information, and it turns out that that information is the guess, you know? So you don't even have to guess. You just have to know how to read the information. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, same question. Find the inverse at 3, but don't find the inverse. Okay. Hopefully this looks familiar. I wasn't lying to you. We did do this at the beginning of the year. I'll pause this. You can set it to some unknown. The unknown comes inside. So you're going to say 3 equals x plus 1, x minus 1. Now this one we can solve algebraically, okay? Um, so we'll solve it algebraically, but did anyone guess? Was anyone able to guess the right answer? Yeah, 2. So if you guess 2, it's correct, but here we do have the scales to move forward. I'll multiply that over. I'll subtract the x over, add the 3 over. So this guy happens to be 2, therefore the original problem is 2. Okay. How about last night's homework? Were you guys, did you guys have any questions on last night's homework for those of you who attempted it? 35?
Okay, 35, we're given this graph. It's at 2, and it's to the left 2, down 4. And it says, use the graph to draw the graph of the inverse. So the inverse must be, or must have symmetry about this line right here, y equals x. So this point is currently 2, 0. But if y equals x, the new point Daniel, would have to be 0, 2. And let's think about this logically. What do we do today? Rick? Focus. The main step in all these problems were to switch x and y, right? So I switched x and y. Let me take another point. This point on the graph was given as negative 4, 0. So the new point must be what? 0, negative 4. Actually, I think I wrote that one down wrong. This one is 0, negative 4. The new point is negative 4, 0. I'll connect it. I'll make it red. And that's the inverse graph. We switch x and y. OK, what else on last night's homework? Yeah, 21. Okay, so I replace f of x with y. I switched x and y. Now I have to solve for the new y. I'm going to multiply this, divide this over, replace it with the inverse, and this is the answer. It just so happens that it matches the original one, too. I, well, if you look at the video online, it said don't verify. You don't have to verify. Okay. It saves a lot of time. It's, it's quite pointless, okay? Okay, let's do something you guys are not good at. Go back to your notes. Okay, so y equals e x minus 1 x equals e, y minus 1. And for me to solve for the new y, it's trapped, right? I can't access it. So I can ln both sides. ln of x. Who remembers the ln of e? Drops off. So 1 plus ln of x is the answer. f inverse of x equals 1 plus ln of x. Oh, great question. So uh, earlier today I was asking for the inverse of a number. That's when you don't have to find the inverse. Okay, can I write this another way or no? Is, is it cool if I write this way? No. I can fix it. So ln of x plus 1, now it's correct. Or if you don't want to do the parentheses, you can put the one in front. Okay, let's go the other way. So I searched x and y. I'm now going to e both sides. e to the x equals y minus 3. Add the 3 over. E, e to the x plus 3 is the inverse. And if, if you remember from last year, this is e to the x. 
here is y equals x, and here's the natural log of x. Son of a... Okay. So last year you learned that e and ln are inverse functions of each other. Okay, uh, you just got tonight's homework. You have very little extra practice, so go ahead and try 18a. Hopefully you got this equation. That red information kind of tells you what you should be guessing. What do you, should, what do you think we should be guessing? Zero, right? They, they've even eliminated our traditional one and negative one. So what happens when you plug in zero? So zero was a good guess, so therefore my answer is zero. Uh, go ahead and cross off B. We're not going to do B. Um, how about we quickly do 4 through 12? Thank you. If you're a little bit lost, for 4 through 12, they want you to perform the horizontal line test. So 5 is easy. If I draw my horizontal line, does it pass that test for number 5? It does, right? So this is a 1 to 1 function. Number 6 is not a 1 to 1 function, so no. And so forth. So quickly do 4 through 12. Yeah. That's for the function part. Absolutely. I love that word that you used there. All, everything, all of these have something in common. So this one is always decreasing, right? If you look at my first few examples, so this one is always increasing. It never comes back down again. So he caught on to that. If something's always increasing, it has to have an inverse. If something's always decreasing, it has to have an inverse. If it's any kind of mixture like this one, is decreasing and now it's increasing it does not have an inverse so he kind of already told us the answer for number four this one is a one-to-one -one function number five 
number seven, hopefully it's obvious it fails the horizontal line test. I'll just put no. I'm going to start abbreviating. No. Eight was yes. Nine, can you guys graph that in your head really quickly? What does that look like? Is that a parabola? It's a line. What kind of slope does it have? So is it fair to say it's always increasing? So the answer is yes. 10, how about rows? What does this one look like? How about Chris? Which way does the parabola open? In negative x squared, doesn't the parabola open down? So I don't have to graph it, but it's obvious it's going to fail, so no. Parabolas cannot have an inverse. This one you might have forgotten. Do you guys know the parent graph for this one, number 11? The V, so we can graph this one. Is this one going to pass? No. And the last one I graphed earlier for you today, does that one pass? Yes. Okay, go ahead and try number 19. Right now, we're not, I'm not wasting your time. We're just doing homework problems. So number 19. So G inverse of 4 is unknown. G of unknown has to be 4. 4 equals 3 plus x plus e to the x. This time there was no hint on what to guess. When there's no hint, we typically try those values. 0. 0 makes it true, so... I now know zero is going to travel in here and here. Okay. okay. Uh, do you guys want to do one more or are you guys ready to start your homework? How about if I give you a table one? It's not in the homework, but let me create a table really quick. Let's see if it lets me write in x, f of x, g of x. Um, one, two, three, negative one, four, negative one, five, negative four, negative How can we pull information off the table? Okay, so I think I know what you're saying. You're saying this guy is right here. So do you think the answer is three? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's a trap. It's not a trap. <laughs> F of negative f of four is right here, so the answer is two. So you will at some point need to know how to pull information off a table. Okay, a lot of that makes sense. Okay, here's your homework. It's very little. Uh, the reason it's little is because some of you guys may have not done, you know, you didn't start last night's homework. So it's going to be four through twelve. So you already have it in your notes. Actually, four through fourteen. Sorry. 
17, 18a, 19, all of 20. So you should be circling these right now. 23 through 28. 31. And I think that's it. Okay. And I'm going to start co collecting homework on a more regular basis. So last night's homework and this homework's due tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So if you haven't done anything, you definitely need to catch up. Except for the people that are testing.